Coming up on Cooking Crave, we have another creative recipe for chicken. That's all coming up next. Hi, I'm Rhonda Fitterer. And I'm Laverne Didi. And we have a couple recipes today. You know, one is chicken, and I was looking for new recipes for chicken. Yeah. There's so much you can do with that, isn't there? And this one's a pretty good one. So you're going to write, want to write down the ingredients and cook this for your family. It's a chicken cheddar rice bake. What you're going to need is a fourth cup of butter, a fourth cup of flour, three bouillon cubes or three teaspoons of chicken base, two cups of milk, four cups of cooked rice cold, a cup of cheddar cheese, three cups of cooked chicken, fourth pound of fresh mushrooms or a slice of the, a can of the bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those are the ingredients for that. And with that, we're going to pair a pretty delicious apple recipe, as, apple salad. It's going to be very good. It's a caramel apple salad. And so part of this, you do have to cook on the stove. Yep. So it's a little mm -hmm. bit of extra step, but it's really good. It's worth it. You're going to need a tablespoon of flour, an eighth cup of sugar, eight ounces of Cool Whip, a cup of chopped salted peanuts, four apples, and those are really your choice on preference of what you like, mm. eight ounce can of crushed pineapple, an egg, and two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Yeah. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Where do you want to start? Well, we're going to start with our uh, chicken cheddar rice bake. Okay. And that, and uh, so we're going to start over here in the stove. We have, uh, we need to uh, take our butter and flour and that kind of make a paste with the uh, with the milk to okay. get that um, you know a little bit thick before we add some of the other ingredients. So okay. we're going to come over here to the stove. Uh, so I, I do have my things here and my preference is I very seldom ever use bouillon cubes. I usually use the paste okay. and that. So, um, like so I said, there's paste. I mean you can buy dry and just add water. So I mean, Abs yeah, is there a, a one better than the other? Well, your the paste that I use is a little bit more concentrated. You know, it, it's got a little bit more flavorful flavor and a little less salt. Okay. I, I buy the one that does doesn't have so much salt in it, because you know most a lot of times the ingredients with your uh, paste is salt first. So when you read your ingredients, if that's a salt first, that's too much. You know, okay. I would certainly go. Of the paste go. or of a powder? Uh, either, either one can be. Okay. Absolutely, either one. So we're going to melt this um, fourth cup of butter here. And then we're going to uh, put our chicken base in there and our uh, flour to make a thickening. Okay. So like I said, I, I took three te teaspoons of my uh, base. Okay. So we'll just get that melted here. Mine and I, I would assume that you can, I mean, I know that you like to buy in bulk, but you can go to the grocery store and buy paste or powder or just bullion. I mean, you can even just buy chicken stock right in a can or Abs in a carton. Yeah, you sure can. And, and that, but like with this here one, you, you're not going to want to use the chicken stock because that's liquid. Okay. And this one here, you, we don't want the liquid. We just want the flavoring. Uh, we just want the flavoring because we're going to add the milk in there. Okay. And that's two cups of milk now. And I'll just pour that in here. And we'll just going to mix that up so that the butter and the flour, all that. So it thickens up a little bit. I'm going to turn the burner up just a little bit here. And this you're going to want to probably um, stir quite a, you know, so it doesn't burn or scorch. Okay. You want to keep that going or else just put it down on a little lower heat. And so do we want this to boil to get it to thicken? Um, it will, yes. Okay. Yes, it, it, it's going to come to a boil to, to bring that flour, that thickening agent together and stuff. So we, we do have that here and that's going to be okay and I we have it too high, we'll kind of get stirred. So we're going to come over here and put our rice in our uh, that take a eight, uh, eight by eight, or this one is a nine by nine, and I like that size and it's nice and deep. Okay. So we're gonna spray that pan. Okay. A bit, and the, then we're gonna put our rice in, in, in on the bottom, <clears throat> and now you can use your um, 
uh, instant minute rice. Uh, okay. I use uh, the regular hard rice. Okay. And to get four cups of rice was just a good uh, cup of hard rice. Oh, okay. So got to remember, you know, your hard rice, it's going to really multiply where if you're minute rice, if you take a cup, you're going to get a cup of rice. Okay. So make sure that, you know, do that. So we're going to just empty that in here. And, and you want to, do you want to cook it and have it cold so you can make this prior? That's correct. You can have that uh, in, in your fridge, just cook that up and that makes it easy. So just spread that out. And to me, with something like this, I mean, the recipe says, you know, cold rice and, and I, to me, it, it's not would be not that necessary okay because you're going to be putting it in the oven and heating it up anyway so um, you just want to make sure your rice is you know cold I mean cooked and, and it's soft and if it's warm I wouldn't worry about that okay. it's just going to heat up quicker in the in the oven then so, okay so have that in there and then we have uh, three cups of chicken uh, pre-cooked already okay and I've got that diced and cooked and when I cook chicken, you know, I always season a little bit with a little bit of pepper and salt just to get that little f extra flavoring in. Um, I think it adds more than you just when you're adding it to the recipe okay. when you cook it with. So we have that. So we're going to come over here and let's just get this here. Uh, so it's just not quite boiling yet here. Country Rose Cafe on East Villard is open for breakfast and lunch seven days a week. Enjoy daily homemade specials, caramel and cinnamon rolls, several different kinds of homemade pies made fresh every day. Country Rose Cafe is also famous for homemade soup, including their ever popular Nefla served every Tuesday. While you're in, make sure to pick up your Channel 18 Cooking Crave recipes and like us on Facebook for different specials and announcements. Country Rose Cafe, the way a cafe should be, located at 837 East Villard in Dickinson. Okay, our milk and flour and uh, chicken base here. This is starting to get thick, which is what we want it to. It's not real thick, but you can definitely see that that's uh, thickening up there really nice. And, you know, like I so said, one thing, you know, we've got butter in here with the chicken base. Um, there isn't um, extra salt in, that we're adding to this. Okay. Uh, so... But with all those uh, ingredients there, it makes a difference. You get quite a bit of seasoning. I'm going to have you pull that out. And then we're going to just mix our chicken in here. And that's kind of why I like to season the chicken a little bit, too, to give that a little bit more flavor with that. So we're going to just stir that, uh, mix that up. Okay. And then that's going to go on top of the chicken. I mean, the rice, excuse me, here. We're just going to mix that up. So the rice is going to have a nice, um, you know, coating of, uh, you know, the, the liquid. So it's not going to be a dry casserole. And then we're going to be putting cheese on top of that too yet. So okay. So when we say a ch chicken cheddar cheese bake, that's exactly what we're going to have. All right. So we've got that mix. So now we'll just scrape that on top. And then we'll just spread that out. Yeah, most of the liquid's just going to soak right into the rice. It, it will. And that's why you want to make sure that your uh, rice, especially if you're using the hard rice, that you have that soft because um, if it's not, it's just going to absorb more of the liquid to, to, till it does get soft, and, and we don't want it dry. Okay. So. And that was three cups of chicken. And what we did already, we were going to bake this at uh, 350 okay. for about 20 to 25 minutes until it, it's bubbly. So Sure. And we're going to put our cheese on do top we of put that. The, when do we put the mushrooms in? Um, right now. <laughs> <laughs> we can just spread them on top. That, that's right. We're going to spread them on top. Uh, I got... Opened the can and had it right here. <laughs> Good catch, Rhonda. So it's not going to make a difference here. We can just, we'll just spread them out. And, topic. and uh, I've made it with fresh mushrooms uh, before, which is really, really good. I just 
didn't uh, have fresh mushrooms on hand. Okay. So I'm just, it says, you know, either fresh or the canned. And so we're going to just push that down a little bit into that mixture there. Because uh, I, I'm glad you caught that because uh, I love mushrooms and stuff that still would probably been good, but not as good. So right. like I said, we just push them down, even them out. And it says about a cup of cheese. Now I had this bag open. It's probably a cup and a half. I'm going to use it all because, sure. you know, I don't think you can ever have too much. So I'll just spread that out. And as, as you can see that uh, this baking dish is pretty deep. Yes. And it is a nine inch. So when the recipe is said eight to nine, eight by eight or nine by nine, I think the eight by eight is just going to be. So if you don't just, have this, if you would do, if you do it in a 13 by nine, just a regular cake pan, it would still work as well. It would. Um, and you're going to just want to watch your baking time. You probably won't need as much time because it's not as deep and it won't take that long, but I, it, it would certainly work, you know. Okay. So if you don't have one like that, you know, make make work what you have. Sure. So we're going to have you open that. And I'll just put that in there. And then we're going to set the timer. And I'm going to just put that, you know, it's going to be about, you know, they say 20 to 25 minutes. And I like that 25 minutes because it is deeper. Okay. And that and stuff. So. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, make our caramel sauce for our caramel apple dessert it's a salad okay. and stuff. So we're going to come over here. We're going to start with an egg. I just get that egg busted there. And I'm putting that in there first because we, we want to kind of beat that egg up a little bit here. Okay. Before we put the other ingredients in. Just whisk it. Uh, you know, just so it's well blended. And all the other ingredients are just going to go in. You don't have to cook um, anything um, a certain length of time. But with the egg in there, you don't want to have, you want to make sure you get the other things in because you don't want the egg to cook up like right. an egg. So we're going to add the half a cup of sugar and a teaspoon of flour. So we'll just get that mixed in with the egg so it doesn't uh, get lumpy. Okay. And we use um, eight ounces of um, pineapple, crushed pineapple in the apple salad and save the juice. You want to drain the apples, uh, I mean the pineapple, but then you're going to put the juice in in this here. So okay. uh, it's just the juice from that eight ounce can. And then two tablespoons of uh, apple cider vinegar. Okay. So that's pretty good. And uh, this one here, uh, because we we can get that going a little bit quicker than because it doesn't have the milk like the other one right. had milk and we didn't want to scorch that. So we're going to bring this to a boil, but you're going to want to make sure this gets cool because you don't want to put this on your apples. It's not going to hurt the apples, but you know that we're going to have cool up in it. Right, so it definitely needs to be cool. So we'll get that going. And like you had mentioned when you were the recipe, um, use apples of your choice. Okay. I like a little tart or a crisp apple. Um, preferably not, you know, your delicious apples. I think they're just a little bit too soft, soft in, okay. in that. So and that. And so we're gonna add pineapple and some salted peanuts, and it, it's. Definitely it's going to taste like a caramel apple salad, which nice. is pretty great, yes. So we just get this going here. I want to get that so we can set that aside and have that cool. And we can get our apples. Uh, we're going to peel and sl uh, slice or cut our apples. and But this will have enough time to cool down until that um, chicken cheddar rice bake is completed. So. Okay. Okay, our uh, caramel sauce here that we're going to put on our apples is starting to get thick here. Okay. And so we're going to turn that off and then we're going to just take it off the burner and set it over here on the counter so that it will be able to cool. Okay. 
Okay, and that, but so that our viewers can definitely see that it has thickened up. And that, you know, we're, you, you want that because, like I said, we're using the Cool Whip and that that you don't want it to dilute and for the apples to get, you know, runny okay. and stuff. So we're going to um, take the apples and, and we're going to want to peel the apple. Um, many times in salads, the uh, peeling is really good. I mean, if you didn't really want to peel that apple, you wouldn't have to. Um, it, the recipe says to peel it, so that's what we're going to do. But um, honestly, uh, if you have a good apple and you wash them, I wouldn't worry so much about peeling it. Okay. Stuff. So we'll just get that done. And so, too, when I'm peeling the apple, I'm not worrying that I, I'm getting just every uh, speck of uh, peeling off uh, there and that. And if you use an apple, I mean a potato peeler, you can really make the peelings pretty thin. Sure, you're not wasting of, so much of the apple. That's correct. And then I do have an apple peeler, but what it's going to do, it also slices the apples into like apple rings. And uh, we want the apples here more in, in a cube and, and stuff, so, and, and not. So I'm gonna put that in there. And I'm gonna get a knife, okay, a couple of knives. Yeah, and I can actually have you, um, are you, Comfortable with that? <laughs> with a knife? Sure. With a knife, sure. I just don't want you to cut off your fingers. I can cut a couple things, Mom. Thank yeah. you. Okay. <laughs> and that's all. And these apples are honey crisp, and that's that's my favorite apple. They're always um, they stay firm, and not too often do they um, ever get that. I mean, it's not, and it's not too sweet of an apple to put in with the caramel applesauce. So you can see how quickly this goes. And, and we're going to just make small, you know, like you, you want for a salad, just to keep it a little bit there. And I'll mix my, stir this up so it cools off a little faster. And I'm sure our, our viewers um, don't need us to, you know, to show them how we peel all the apples or whatever. I'm pretty sure they're 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 gonna want to make sure I didn't bloody any fingers. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll show my fingers when we come back. That we come. That's that'll be a good plan. See your VA home loan expert at ENG Lending of Dickinson. Jay Wandler and the professional staff at ENG Lending provide expertise and services that are traditionally offered by the largest financial institutions, all with the local integrity of a local community bank. No wonder why ENG Lending is the area's number one choice for North Dakota veteran home loans. Visit them online at 456loan.com or call 701-250-8166 today. We have all our apples cut, and I did uh, cool this off uh, here, and it, once it's cooled, it's really quite stiff, and that's what you want because uh, uh, you don't want your salad to get, you know, runny or whatever with okay. the cool whip in there. And, and no Band-Aids. I didn't cut myself. Oh, th that's right. Yeah. Did you know we can have those Band-Aids that are pretty much skin tone? You don't even see them. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's correct. And uh, we're going to have uh, the, the pineapple, the crushed pineapple. And when I uh, did drain that pineapple, I actually kind of squeezed it a little bit to make sure I would get as much of the liquid out as possible. Because again, we don't want, you know, the, our uh, dressing to get uh, soggy on there. Okay. So while I, this, I'm going to have you just take that out there and I'm going to put our caramel sauce in there. And that was just a tablespoon of flour. Um, so it, it thickens very nicely with just that amount. But there wasn't a lot of uh, liquid in, uh, amount in there, you know, with the, the juice and right. uh, the apple cider vinegar. So we'll set that to the side. 
And I know that our uh, cheddar cheese bake is going to be about ready to come out pretty in a few minutes here. So we'll just get this mixed up. And there, so. And I really like the salted peanuts in there. Uh, but it, basically, that's more or less an option. Sure. You know, you don't have to put peanuts in it if that's something that... Uh, it has that little bit of extra crunch, and I mean, obviously, if you have a family member that's allergic, you don't, but right. it adds just a little bit of something extra. And it's that sweet, uh, salty little bit of taste, you know, mm -hmm. with, with our caramel sauce and uh, with adding the peanuts to it, then it gives a little, like you said, a crunch and uh, a little bit of salt to it. Sweet and salty is just really a... Good, good flavor, isn't it? Good combination. Yeah. And it's surprising. I don't think that that combination has been out, you know, so many years. I don't ever remember that growing up or whatever. So mm -hmm. it, it's just something that they've come up with. And it's a couple of salted, roasted salted peanuts. So we'll get that mixed in there. And as you can see, as we're mixing this uh, with that caramel sauce, you know, as thick as it got, it, it's really making a nice, nice dressing on here without it being runny or anything like that. Right. Well, and even if you put this in a refrigerator and you had some leftover for tomorrow, I don't think it still would get runny. No, it's going to really hold its consistency to that. If we're lucky to have a little bit left over for tomorrow. Right. Okay, so we got that mixed really good there, so uh, we're going to go check our rice bake and get that out. Okay. And so we're going to come over to the oven here, and we'll, I'll just pull that out and just double check it. it should, that cheese should be really nice and bubbly by now, which, which it is. So, oh, that's excellent. And, and just a little, you know, uh, brown on top, nothing... Uh, I'm going to turn the oven off just the way it should be. So we're going to have that there. And we'll get a little bit bigger spoon to get that out there. Okay. I'll give you a plate. And we can, well, at least well, this is something that we don't have to cut and wait to cool until. No, casseroles just dig yeah, in right away. Just dig right in. So and we're going to get, get some of our. Apple salad here. Okay. Well, nice. and the apple salad's really easy to do if you make it in winter. If you want to cool it off fast, you can just throw it outside. In the snow. In the snow. And if you, summer, you can certainly just throw it in the freezer too. That's right. Yeah. So it's not something that you have to, you know, we could have had this, it can, it can be a lot quicker salad than cooling it just naturally on the on the on the counter absolutely and, and again you can make that prior sure and just uh, when you're done just put it in the fridge and then when you want to you know assemble your salad then it's ready there to it go. is too yeah there's that's lots right. of different ways to do it to get these recipes just go to consolidated's website www.ctctel.com and when you do submit your recipes your name does go into a drawing for a cool cooking crave apron everybody needs one of those Thank you always for joining us on Cooking Crave. Thank you to our sponsors. Join us again next time when we do it all over again.